Today I'm answering a very important question. Should you use a soda stream to carbonate your homebrew? Let's find out. So many of you have heard of the soda stream. The soda stream is a way to generally speaking carbonate water. It's the primary thing that's supposed to be carbonated in these. Uh, you fill up your water bottle up to the line on here and then you put it in here and there's a button on top. This button connects to a CO2 tank, a little CO2 cartridge, whatever you want to call this thing. And when you press it, it adds that CO2 into it and carbonates things. Like I said, most people use this for water, but that's not to say you can't use it for homebrew, right? We're gonna test it with something kind of odd. Well, homebrew, of course. We're gonna test it with a just out of primary beer. This beer is not carbonated. I just poured basically some of it into this mason jar. And we're gonna see if that carbonation translates into a hopefully good tasting beer. At the end of this video, I'm also gonna talk about a way for you to keg things in a smaller fashion if you'd like to force carbonate without having to go through the total um, buying process of large kegs and stuff like that. This is a sponsored video and I will be reviewing this from TM Craft. So if you're looking for how to set up this keg, there's a timestamp right here. If you're just curious on what this looks like, wait till the end and we'll talk about how to make this keg work for your homebrew. So this test should be pretty easy and I have a couple parts of this. I've already tested this with mead specifically. I, uh, <laughs> I did something kind of sneaky with a friend recently, and so I'll pop to a video of that here in a second, but let's see what happens with this beer. Like I said, non-carbonated beer, literally just came out of the bucket that I, had, I was doing stuff in. It is cold, I will specify that. I don't know how this would do with room temp things necessarily. Carbonation does generally transfer better in a cold environment, so that's just important. So we're gonna go ahead and pour this into here as carefully as we can, not make a mess. And I'm only gonna pour up, hopefully I got enough of it to fill up to this line right here. Oh, I don't know if I did. Oh, maybe I did. Hold on, I gotta get a little more of this beer. All right, I have filled up to the designated line on the soda stream. Put this in here. There's no spinning. Some of them, I think you have to like spin it on. This one, you just lock it in. Now, in my experience, I've had to do more than one press in order for things to be carbonated. So I think I'm gonna do at least two, and then we'll see if I need to add another one. So here's one. Oh, okay. That's a little bit um, precarious. Do I dare prepare a towel or something? Do I do one more? I, j I just don't feel like one was enough. I just have a feeling it wasn't but I don't know if this is a good idea. Well, hold on, hold on. Okay, take it off. I mean it. I don't think one was enough. It's just barely carbonated. I'm gonna try one more. Oh my gosh. I got real close again. Just gonna let it set for a second. Okay. Moment of truth. Oh shoot. Oh, make a little bit of a mess. There we go. <laughs> Glad I have this towel. Let's pour a little bit of this beer. I think that was probably it. That's probably all I'm gonna do. Now, could you do more than that? More carbonation than that? I'm sure you could. More presses, I should say. I mean, it's carbonated and it does taste like beer. Did it do the job? I think so. I do think it, it did a, a good job of um, carbonating, thankfully. I mean, that's the purpose of this thing. If it didn't add any carbonation to the liquid, then we're in trouble. The company's in trouble. Now let's talk about some of the cons of this thing. The pros, you have a way to carbonate your homebrew in a single bottle scale. Here's the problem is you could carbonate with your bottle here and if it's totally carbonated, that's awesome. You can drink out of this bottle, you can pour it in a glass, you can do those things, but you can't bottle it from here. 
I don't think it'd be very safe necessarily to take and put a, the cap on this thing, even though you could. You can't really just go and pour this into bottles now because obviously you'd lose the carbonation. So for a momentary drink, maybe that would work. Um, and as far as bottling things and putting it later, like bottling a bunch of brew, probably not. Another con would be that, or is, that in order to get the brew into here, you're generally pouring like I did. Not a great way to uh, avoid introducing oxygen, which most of the time, the brews we're gonna have um, are not very friendly to oxygen. If you talk to any brewer, any professional brewer especially, the big name of the game is avoiding oxygen in the alcohol point. <laughs> so before it ferments, it's fine, you can add oxygen, but after there's some alcohol content, you gotta avoid that. So there is a chance that you might oxygenate your brew a little bit as you are you know, pouring this thing in. Not a great thing, but did it fit the bill? Did it carbonate this brew? Yes, it did. I just did this with a beer. You can do this with a cider. You can do this with wine. You can do this with uh, mead. Anyways, you could do that with all of those things. So I actually did a test to see if my friend could identify the uh, differences between a mead specifically that was carbonated with a soda stream versus one that was carbonated in a keg. So I'll uh, jump over to that quick tasting. For this test, I had to separate things out. Before I had kegged the mead, I put a portion of it into a wine bottle, knowing that I was going to uh, force carbonate it with the soda stream, and the rest went into the keg. So I'm gonna go ahead and pour some off the tap, and then I'm also gonna soda stream carbonate the wine bottle portion. Both of them are cold, and you'll see me here. I am taking and pushing the soda stream button multiple times, and then I'm gonna pour them into multiple glasses. And let's see if my friend can tell the difference between the two. All right, Preston, we're gonna do some tasting. Okay, I'm These ready. meads look all of the same, and that is intentional. Yes. Your little sets, you got two sets here. You got one with tape, one without tape. I want you to taste them, just back and forth, tell me to see any difference. Here's a, here's a tape. Tape. Blueberry mead, not that that matters. The test really isn't anything in occurrence with the flavor. There is something familiar about that. Brought back college memories. Call. I don't know. Uh -oh. I don't know. Could be good or bad. I don't know what it was. Okay. okay. Non tape? Non tape. Any difference? Yeah, a little bit. There's a difference. What's the difference? <clears throat> the non taped ha oh, was uh, smoother. I feel like okay. there's something about the tape that just like, it just hit, it hit, hold on. Well, it's colder. It's definitely colder. Yep, a little bit colder. It's like musky. Musky, interesting. Yeah. It's got I don't like know a... that we actually end up thinking about this here. So I want you to note, what do you notice about carbonation on each side? This one's more carbonated. Okay. The taped which, one. The taped, which is, as people are seeing on screen. More carbonated. Yeah, the uh, non-taped is a little less. Yes. Carbonated. So it's, that's what I, I think that's what I, when I said it was smoother, mm -hmm. that's what I noticed. I think that's what it was. Well, I was gonna do some sort of triangle test, but it doesn't really matter because you can probably easily identify the two factors here or the two differences. Yeah. Carbonate. One of these okay. is carbonation. The, the test here is carbonation. Oh, yeah. This came from a keg. Okay. Saw me pour this and yeah. then I ran away secretly in the other room and poured a, a bottle of non-carbonated version of this mead. I threw this one to a soda stream and just hit it a few times with carbonation. And because one thing people always ask me is, can you carbonate a, a mead with a soda stream? Oh. Or something like that, instead of having a keg. The keg's way better. The keg is, well, it, it worked better for carbonation, I would say. Yeah. Um, but I mean, they look the same. They're like identical. This one, I think I would just, just have to hit it like three or four more times. I don't, maybe, I just, this tastes like juice. Yeah. Like the same level of carbonation as juice, but this yeah. one has like, I can, it's there. So I think you could probably just hit it with a bunch of carbonation. Like hit that, hit it three or four more times, but I hit it on there four times and you're supposed to do it like once for things. So the presence of alcohol, I think actually makes it to where you have to do more. And it being cold probably. And the cold would help. Yeah. This is somewhat cold. Easy test. Easy test. I think it works, but I don't know. Maybe I'll do more testing before the end of this video, but thank you for side by siding. We have lots of mead now. We have a ton of mead. All right, chug, here we go. Here we go, let's go. <laughs> Two at a time. So the biggest thing there he noted was it really wasn't as carbonated. 
Maybe that's just part of the game. Maybe those me pressing the button more times. It will work. Would I recommend it for all things? Not necessarily. There's better ways to carbonate, including bottle carbonation, which I do have a video on, and keg carbonating, which I wanna talk about that now. TM Craft, who makes lots of kegs, has so graciously sent this to me to review, and they want me to help all the people who might have bought this product uh, and who wanna know how to set it up. So I'm gonna go ahead and help you set it up. Let's get the camera a little closer. Included in your TM Craft 1.3 gallon keg kit is the keg itself, which I have rinsed this out with some brewing sanitizer already. We are gonna be filling this thing up with a little bit of mead here in a second. You also have a lid, which is nice because it has a pressure release on there. It also has a place for our regulator, which we're gonna go ahead and talk about that right now. This is the regulator. This is what's gonna help you control all of your PSI or pressure um, that you're gonna put into this with your CO2. You will need some cartridges. So this is a little CO2 cartridge that has plenty of uh, CO2 to carbonate a one gallon brew generally. You might need a second one for serving said brew. We're gonna put this on in a second, but first let's go ahead and attach our lid and our pressure gauge. So this is pretty simple. We're just gonna take, we're going to add this to here. So I'm just gonna do that. I'm just gonna screw this on. Pretty self-explanatory there. It's attached now. You have a pressure gauge right here that will tell you what the PSI is. Now we're going to take, and we're gonna set this to the side for a moment because that's all set up. We're going to take on the keg actually, and there is the shank, and the shank is what is gonna pour our beer, our spot at least. You have a little spring. The spring is what's gonna go in between the shank and the actual spout. So I'm gonna take this right here. I'm gonna actually put this on the end. And then essentially I'm just gonna push this into here. We're gonna take and tighten this onto here like that. And that does have grooves in that groove. The grooves are here to help it like you guide it. Like obviously if you put your tap like this sideways, it wouldn't work very well. So we want it to go straight up and down. And then we're going to take, slide this over. This is not very helpful, there we go. This does take a little bit of coordination. So what you see here is I've finally attached it and I took a little bit of effort, but now I'm gonna take and use this wrench that they provide to tighten this down. It should stop tightening and voila, there we go. We have ourselves this attached part and it's straight up and down with the keg, so that's helpful. Included you have some small little rubber pieces here. These are generally for the uh, CO2 cartridge here, not the cartridge, excuse me, the regulator. So I'm gonna keep all my little pieces just in case I need the replacements. Now we're actually gonna fill this thing up with some mead. So let's go ahead and add some mead to it. All right, so I filled this up with mead and we're gonna put our lid on here. get it pretty tight. So now here's where the CO2 gauge side comes into play. We're gonna take, and we're gonna add our cartridge. Now this cartridge is just gonna screw right in here. And if we've got this tight, we've got this all in the right spot, we're gonna make sure this handle is not going to, to move. Right, just in case we get some spill action, here is what we do. We screw in this cartridge and it'll pierce. Okay, cartridge is in. So now we're gonna actually take the, and move this little dial on the side. The dial is gonna raise the pressure. We're gonna raise it to like 22. And the intent here is to hold it at 22 for probably two to three days at least, I would say, to get this to be carbonated. And a cold temperature actually carbonates better. So if you can carbonate cold, you'll be happier. So now we're gonna leave this. We're gonna come back and take a pour of it. Let's wait a couple days. All right, here we are. About 48, 
60, I don't know, somewhere in the two to three days later mark. Um, this has been carbonating with the little cartridge. It is done, I believe it's done at least. So I am going to release, I'm gonna first of all decrease all of my pressure out of this. So you can see here, I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna decrease it. This is kind of cold already, so it's decreased. And I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of all CO2. Okay, now I'm actually gonna take, you see how this is now? at zero. I want to have a little bit for serving pressure, so I'm going to increase these, increase this, excuse me, just to like, maybe to like five right there. So I just added a little bit of pressure to give me some serving pressure. So now, the moment of truth, you've been waiting for this, let's pour some of this mead that we put in here. That's a pretty, one, it's a pretty looking mead because of the stuff I put in it, but two, it's also carbonated very nicely carbonated. Bubbles coming up. That's a pretty dang good brew. It is cold. I will specify that I did make it cold to help it uh, carbonate faster. The system's really cool. Everything costs a little money. This is kind of expensive, not gonna lie to you. But of all my kegs that I've tried, one gallon plus kegs, this is up there in my top two. The other one I really like is more like a ball lock keg. So this one's really nice though. It's also nice because it has its own serving side. So go check it out. Check out TM Craft. I think there'll be some links below if you want to use those. That's how you use it. If you have questions, feel free to ask me. But I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. And maybe you want to go and do some stuff with the soda stream. Maybe you want to do stuff with a one gallon keg. Maybe you want to go do a five gallon keg setup. I got information for all of those things. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers. Thank you.